Hallelujah. Arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Yes, even though darkness will cover the nations of the world, and deep darkness the people, yet the Lord your God shall arise upon you. The Lord is our light and salvation. That is why we will never be afraid or fear what man can do unto us. The God we serve is a God who is faithful. He will never lie. He will never break his covenant, nor utter what has come already out of his mouth. His promises are sure in all times, in all seasons, in every day of your life. You can be sure that the word of God is alive and well and is walking today as it walked yesterday. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we have a sure anchor for our soul. His promises are yea and amen. And so we can run to that very anchor of our soul, lay hold on those promises, and be sure that even though heaven and earth pass away, the word of God will never pass away. Hallelujah. So we have every reason to have hope, even in times like this, because our God is a God of all hope. Praise be to God. He is alive. He is well. He is strong and mighty. Heaven doesn't have any panic button. And heaven is not in any emergency. Heaven has no emergencies. God knows all things before they ever come to pass. So let's go ahead today and receive his wonderful word into our heart. And I pray that God will give you an understanding today into all things. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise for today's broadcast. And I pray that your blessings and your grace rest upon every single one watching. And in Jesus' name, I bind the powers of the enemy. Thank you, dear Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, today, let's go to the book of Jonah. And I hope you have read that book of Jonah before. Uh, you know the story of Jonah. But I think it is great and wonderful if we can go to the book of Jonah today and read something there and learn something there today from the book of Jonah. Now, in the, in, in the New Testament, both in the book of uh, Matthew and the book of uh, Luke, the Lord made a reference to, the, to, to Jonah, the prophet of Jonah. In fact, when they came asking him, to show them a sign, we can go ahead and read the book of Luke chapter 11. Let's begin that, please. Luke in the New Testament. We can get it back to Jonas in the, the book of Jonah. Luke in the New Testament. And we go down there to verse um, uh, 30. And um, uh, verse 30 says, uh, in fact, here in uh, verse 29, it says, And when the people were gathered to think together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. That's Luke chapter 11, verse 29 and, and 30 now. Okay, and verse 30 says, For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. And uh, again, in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 12, the Lord was referring again to, the, to Jonas here. Matthew 12. And verse, uh, we can read from verse 40. And it says these words from verse 40. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So here he said that Jonah uh, will be the sign to this very generation. That as uh, Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, even so, must the Son of Man, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And he says in verse 41, The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with the generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. When I read the story of Jonah, and also what the Lord said about the prophet Jonas, and also I understood that even in, the, in Mark chapter 4, if you remember there, Mark chapter 4, this will help us uh, understand it better. Mark chapter 4, and um, from verse 37, I would say, we can also read the story of the Lord Jesus Christ here, 
when he was in the boat. In fact, verse, um, verse 36 says of Mark 4, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with them other little ships. Verse 37, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Say with me, and there was a great calm. I believe the Lord is trying to bring calm to your troubled waters. He's trying to calm the raging of the sea and the storms around your life today. Verse 4, he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? So here we see the Lord Jesus telling the people that as Jonah was assigned to the Ninevites, so he himself will be assigned to the Ninevite, to, to, to our time today. And then again, he said that as Jonah was three days and three in the belly of the well, so also him, the Lord Jesus Christ, will be in the heart of the earth. And then we see here also that he was here in the boat. And there was this terrible turbulence in the seas, that basically the ship was about to go under. And uh, the disciples were with him, and he was asleep. I so asked myself, how can he be sleeping in such troubled waters? And uh, how can he just be sleeping? I mean, the boat is up and down. The wave was covering the, the, the ship. And these were real master fishermen that spend most of their life. But the river, they, they know the waters very well. And they know what it means to, be, to go into such a tempest. And he was sleeping. So we go down to the book of Jonah now, and we can see that similarities of the Lord Jesus Christ as he himself already spoke about. In, in the book of Jonah, chapter uh, 1, now one thing that is different here, the Lord was not in disobedience to the Father. He was obeying the Father. So we read here, Jonah chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. God always sent warnings before judgment. He always sent a message, a prophetic message, prophetic warnings to any nation, to any city, to any home or house or individuals, all maybe in different ways, but he always makes sure he warns the sinner or this sinful nation, or the sinful city, or the sinful generation, before he sends a severe judgment. Now, when the warnings are not heeded, then there's nothing else he can do but to allow judgment to come upon the individual, upon the family, upon the city, or nation, or even a generation. So here the Lord said to Jonah, please rise up, go to Nineveh, and what? And warn it. Because the cup of his iniquity is almost full and there's nothing i can do but to release the cup of judgment so look what happened but but jonah rose up to flee unto tashish from the presence of the lord and went down to jo joffa i was there years ago and he found a ship going to tashish so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto tashish from the presence of the lord what an amazing thing. In fact, if you look in the map, uh, 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 Nineveh and, uh, and Tashis was totally in opposite direction. So here is the man of God. Here is a prophet. Here is a preacher. Here is a child of God. And God has given him a specific mandate, a specific instruction and command. No confusion, no missing words. He didn't say, oh, I didn't understand what he was saying. Jonah understood clearly what the Lord wanted him to go and do where to go what word to preach and he got it clear and plain yet he willingly knowingly disobeyed god now in this time in history uh, the ninevites was really oppressing the jewish people so here is a, a jewish prophet and god is sending him to go to the enemy nation 
of the Jews to proclaim, to warn them, to bring them to salvation and repentance. And he would say, why will I go and warn this sinful nation that is oppressing my land, oppressing my people? They are oppressing the Jewish people. They are occupying our land. They are plundering us. They are robbing us. We are victims of their power. So why would I, a Jewish prophet, go and warn an enemy nation, that is an enemy to my nation, Israel, to repent of their sin, to find mercy from the God of Israel? And so he didn't want to go. Why? Because the Ninevites were oppressing the Jewish nation. You know, we are in such a time where God has to do something to really shake the church. And uh, even the preachers, the pastors, the churches, the believers. There's so much things going on in the churches today. That God sometimes will allow some things to happen. Not just to the church or to the preacher or to the pastor. Or to the, but to the whole nations of the world. So he can get the church to, to, to do what he's supposed to do. So here we see that Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. Why? Because Ninevites were oppressing the Jewish nation at this time in history. Now, look what happened. So he went completely in opposite direction. He went and joined these people who were going to Tashish. He basically was going on total opposite direction of what God had told him to do. He was going a different direction. And so, and then verse, verse 4 says, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his god and cast forth the waves that were in the ship to the sea to lighten it of them but jonah was gone down to the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep now i was just asking is there any kind of uh, Something had to learn here. Yeah, the Lord was in the boat with the disciples for sure. They were not going in the opposite direction for sure. The Lord was not rebelling against the Father, He was obeying the Father. But here uh, we see this kind of comparison that while the ship was in terrible turbulence and problem and was about to basically be destroyed, the Lord was also lying down in a pillow and was sleeping. But here we see Jonah. He was lying down in the sea and was fast asleep when everybody and everything in that ship was, was in big trouble. Jonah was completely sleeping and resting. Sometimes people can be resting in the midst of chaos and judgment and destruction because they, they are in total rebellion to God's will and call in their lives. And so let's see what happened. So the shipmasters came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. You know, here, uh, uh, the, the, this shipmaster, these people in the ship, uh, they, they, they have tried everything they could to save themselves, the ship, and their wealth. They have thrown even their wealth, their riches, their gold, their silver, their diamond, they have poured it all into the sea to lighten the sheep, to see if they can save the sheep. Also, they have also called upon all their gods, all their idol gods. You see, when pressure comes on earth, when there's a problem in the world, the viruses, infections, and catastrophes. Men do go to the extremes to do whatever they can to save their sheep. They will call on their gods. Everybody call on their religious god, whatever they worship. The gods, the demon gods, the cultic gods, the witches are doing their witchcraft. Islam is calling on Islam God. Buddhists are calling the Buddhist God. Hindu are calling on the Hindu God. Christians so calling on the Christian God. And, and here you see that they have called on all their gods and none of their gods answered them or brought them any respite to the turbulence in the seas. And then they decided to, God didn't help us now. Let's try to see if we can throw 
our world to the angry wave. We are in the season now where nations of the world are pouring all their reserves and all their monies and trillions of dollars and billions of euros and all that to see if they can salvage this shaking boat that we all live in, we call the world. Anyway, but one person really knew exactly what was going on. And that was one little man called Jonas. And so look what happened. So now when they have tried all their gods, poured out, thrown away all their goods and all their wealth to the angry wave, and nothing was better. Then they came down here and found this little man called Jonah lying and sleeping peacefully and as if he had no problem. Then they said unto him, what is wrong with you, mister? Wake up, mister. You lying down here sleeping. Don't you see what is going on? We've lost everything we got in the sheep. Our lives are in danger. Don't you know the sheep you are sleeping in is about to be destroyed? How can you be so inhuman and so, I mean, what's the matter with you? Awake and call upon your God. And so I believe that the time is coming and now is the time when the world will try all that they know of and all their knowledge and all their wisdom uh, and they, at last they will recognize that there is truly a people on this earth who are serving the true and the living God. And the time is coming and I know now is the time, it's already happening, when they begin to understand that there are those who are really serving the true and the living God here on earth. And they will know that the answer to the, the, to the problems and the crisis in the world, it rests with the almighty God and his servants and children. So when the, their energies have failed, when all the efforts have failed, at last when I've lost everything, they will recognize that there are people here on this earth who are serving the true and the living God. And they will believe that if they will awake and take their place and cry to the almighty God, that things will change. And that's what they did here. They come and woke up Jonas and told him, call upon your God. Our God has failed. Mammon has failed. But we believe that you, who is serving the true and living God, if you will really, really wake up and call on him, he will have mercy upon us. And so, and then, then verse 8 says, they said then unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thy occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people are thou? Verse 9, and he said unto them, I am an Hebrew. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which had made the sea and the dry land. Hello, hello world. It is time you know that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he is the Lord. He is the God of heaven. And he is the one that made the land and the sea. He is the maker of the human race. He is the God that made man to dwell on the face of this earth. Heaven is his and the earth is his. And he is not dead. He is alive and well. And his kingdom ruleth over all. At the end of everything, humanity will learn that there is a God in heaven. Whose kingdom is over all kingdoms. Who has all power in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And it is, this is no more time to ignore and to despise the God, the Christian God. It is no more time to add him to one of the gods. He is the supreme God, the supreme potentate. Only him can save. Only him can heal. Only him can heal and deliver humanity from their crisis and confusion. The Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The son of the living God. It is time that we abandon all the idols of this world. And abandon our confidence in mammon and in human knowledge and intelligence. And bow our knees in repentance. And call upon the one and the only true God. The maker of heaven and earth. And so Jonas told him who he was. Whom he served. And then. And then verse 10, he says, Then we are the men exceedingly afraid. Said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. He told them, I am in rebellion. I have not obeyed God as I supposed to obey God. 
He has told me what to do, where to go, what to say, but I choose not to. And because I am in rebellion, that is why the whole sheep is in danger. Wow. So look what happened then. Verse 11, they said there unto him, what shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. Your family can be going through turbulence. Your business can be going through turbulence. Your city, your nation, your government can be going through terrible turbulence and tempest. Why? Because there is somebody among you or you yourself have chosen not to acknowledge God and to obey him and to believe him. For years and years, God might be tugging in your heart. Repent of your sin. Stop committing adultery. Stop stealing. Stop cheating. Stop deceiving. Stop exploiting people. But you won't let God, you won't let him, you won't obey him. And now you brought this chaos upon your life or family or church or ministry or your own very life. Jonah knew why. There was a tempest in the sea. Sometimes in our heart, in our lives, we might know why there's trouble. Because, you know, the Bible has told us the truth. He that sinneth must die. The wages of sin is death. You cannot pick up a, a fire in your bosom and not be burned. So here we are. And Jonah told them. And then he said in verse 2, he said unto them, take me up. And cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake, this great tempest is upon you. When a man goes and lives a loose life, he can bring sickness to his wife and to his children. When a city, a mayor, a, a prime minister, a president, a king, a queen, join alliance with Satan, join a call, or do such things and sin against heaven and against the earth and defile their own land where they live. When we turn our back on the living God, the maker of heaven and earth, God's, God is a God of patience. He can endure for a while, but the time comes when there's nothing else he can do. He must bring down judgment. So Jonah was told to go to Nineveh and to cry against it, to warn them that judgment was at the door if they do not turn from their sins and repent of their sins. What was happening in the ship where Jonah was, was about to happen in Nineveh if they don't repent. So some of the things we've been seeing of recent is just a prelude to a more greater disaster. Uh, if we don't turn truly, sincerely, with all our heart, both sinners and saints, the worst things can happen to us. When the shaking begins, when the judgment is coming, it does not spare the sinner, it doesn't spare the saints. So God is calling both sinners and saints to a time and season of sincere heart searching and repentance and reflection to make a choice if we want it to end here now or do we prefer for more evil to come our way. So, verse, um, verse 14 says, Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. They were now no more calling upon the adult gods. No, they are now calling upon the living God. Don't go and repent before your cultic temples. That doesn't make any sense in the time of danger. Come and repent before him to whom all men owe their lives. Stop fearing demons and evil powers. Fear the one who alone is to be feared. The Lord Jesus said, listen, don't fear them who will only kill the flesh, but cannot touch the soul. But fear him who has the power to kill both the body and to throw the soul into hell. That's the one to fear. Who do you fear? The one who will kill your flesh. The one who will deny you of a job or of an opportunity. And because of that, you, uh, you sin against God. Because you are, trying, you are fearing man, you are fearing the devil. No, you better fear him who has the power to kill both the flesh and the soul in hellfire. 
And so, so they took up Jonah and cast it forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So here we are. At last, Jonah was ready. Verse, chapter 2, verse 1 said, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the, uh, the fish's belly. I would prefer to pray to God in the church, not out of the f- belly of the fish. So in this hour, we should choose, where do you want to pray for? From the belly of the fish of judgment or from the temple of the living God when we have obeyed him? In fact, uh, in chapter 3, we can see there as we close here. And then verse 1 says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, preach unto it, and preach that I have bid thee. So at last, God's word came again the second time. Our God is a God of mercy. He's a God of second chances. Now, the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. This message that is coming to you and I today can be God telling you, Listen, are you ready now? What have you learned from all that you went through? Are you now ready to live the life? Are you now ready to obey my word? Are you now ready to preach my own message? Not your message, but mine. The message I've given to you. Let's pray. Father, we pray today, bringing our heart before you, asking for your mercy, and asking to give every single one of us, Lord God, a second chance to go where you want us to go, to do what you want us to do, and to preach your message to the people who've sent us to preach your message. Forgive, O Lord, and help us to obey you this time. We magnify you, Father. We give you honor and glory in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray also that everyone watching, Lord, today, my humble say before you, and repent and return and obey you and be willing to do what you've called them to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Call right today, send an email, take a picture of the info on the screen and keep in touch with us. I will be glad to hear from you today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the light of glory of God shine upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you.